Hey you guys, guys, Stevens again. This has been a long time since I've made any videos, but I just had a question from someone who asked me how you would go about in an invoice to duplicate the invoice and to duplicate all the items that are in the invoice as well and to kind of keep them all together on the new and duplicated invoice. And I thought I would reply to him, but then I thought it'd probably be uh, quicker to just do it and show it. Um, so I, th I have this invoicing database that I've done a little while ago and if you go to file manage database you can see it's extremely simple and this was just like probably also a simple example I made for someone and it just uh, it has a client table that is related to the invoice table and the invoice has just an ID a date and a client ID then that invoice has line items related to it using the invoice ID FK fields this has products on it from a product table and it just has the amount, the price, lookup and the total. So it's very simple, very basic. But what would you, how would you make a duplicate of this invoice but keep all the items on that new invoice as well? Um, you would, for instance, make a button that says duplicate, oops, do. <laughs> invoice okay now what would how would this button work now it's a bit tricky because you've got an invoice and you can very simply just um, duplicate a record by going to here uh, but then you will have a new record but nothing in it so what you need to do is now that you've got a new invoice you will also need to duplicate the records that are in there um, how would you go about doing that I think you need to make a script but in order to find out which script set steps you need to take, I think it's probably best that we just kind of try and figure it out manually first and then we will learn which steps we need to take. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take a piece of paper to write steps down and then I'm going to go in my invoices uh, a table here and I'm going to set it in table view and then uh, let's figure it out. So the first thing to do will be to find our first invoice and I only have one invoice here, invoice ID 1. And now what I have to do is basically duplicate these records and they need to become, if I look at my invoices table, so I had invoice number one and now I have the new one is invoice number two. I will now have to uh, basically make copies of those but change this value so that it is now uh, so that th those new ones are assigned to the invoice number two and not to invoice number one. So what do I do? I go to my line items table in my script. I find all the in all, all the line items that are um, so I'm going to write these steps down and I will have to uh, look for uh, all the uh, line items from invoice one and then duplicate them. So let's try and figure out what that does. I will be on my first record here. What happens if I go record, duplicate record? Then I will get a new one, um, which will actually be is, is this one duplicated. It will arrive at the bottom. So I will then have to set the invoice ID to two. Okay, then what I can do is maybe, um, because I don't need this one anymore, I could hide this one. I could say records um, omit record. Then I go back to the first record. I can do that. There's a script step for it. And I've done this one, so this one can also be omitted. So omit record. Then this one needs to be duplicated. Record, duplicate record. And then this one also needs to be set to invoice ID 2, etc, etc. So this is basically, you've got kind of the same action that's going on over and over and over again. You don't know how many records there will be. So you have to make sure that that can be variable. And then you've got these steps of duplicating the first one, then omitting that one, omitting that one, then going, then you will go back to the first one and omit that one as well, because that one is done. And then you will have the last one, which you will then also duplicate, change the invoice ID, and then um, you go and you just continue, you omit this one and then you go back to the first one and you omit that one as well. And when all the records are gone, I had three in the beginning, now I have six. Uh, let's see what this looks like on my invoice. 
So if I scroll back and forth from invoice 1 to invoice 2, I have now correctly duplicated my invoice and also duplicated all my line items. So let's make a script for that and let's call it duplicate invoice. Now this, I do have to tell you, this is the very easy way to do it. Of course, in real life, you will have to deal with different stuff as well. Like for instance, do you have a difference between a price offer and an actual invoice? Does your actual invoice have an invoice number that needs to be unique? If that is the case, then you need to maybe, when you duplicate your invoice, maybe need to calculate a new invoice number or maybe that invoice that you duplicate needs to then become first a price offer before you turn it into an invoice or stuff like that. That's stuff you're gonna have to kind of figure out uh, for yourself. For this very simple exercise, we're just going to um, do, uh, do it really simply. So what do we need? Um, we've got one invoice and we're gonna make a second one. So we're definitely going to have to duplicate um, our invoice. But we need to think ahead a little bit because we're going to need to have, uh, we need to find all the line items of our first invoice and then we need to rename, reassign uh, them to our second invoice. So we're going to need two uh, invoice IDs. The first one we're going to need is going to be, let's say, invoice ID old that, or original maybe. That's the first one and that's going to be our invoice ID. And then we need to make sure that we set that one first because then when we duplicate our record, we will arrive in our second invoice ID. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this one, control C, I'm gonna paste it again, and I'm going to set a second variable, invoice new, invoice ID new, and that's gonna be the same one. Basically, we set the uh, variable, we, we remember because set variable is like a remember script step. We remember the ID of our first invoice, our original one, we duplicate it, and then we remember the ID of our second invoice. Okay, so now we've done that, now we need to go to another layout, and usually what I do when I go to another layout, I will freeze the window because I don't really want to see my window flicker or go to another layout. So I'm going to freeze my window, I'm going to go to layout, and I'm going to go to my line item. Then I will enter find mode and I will uncheck my pause button because I don't want to pause there. I want to immediately set a field and I want to set in my line items table. I want to set the invoice IDFK to the value of what do I need to search first? My old in my old line item. So my invoice ID old dollar sign invoice ID old and make sure you don't make any typos because otherwise it's not going to work. So I'm going to enter find mode, set field, then I'm going to perform find, which is, pay attention, is under found sets. There is also a perform find replace that is under editing, but you don't want to use that one. So you just use perform find, then you should find all the line items um, of your original invoice. And then what are we going to do then? If you remember correctly, we need to go to our first record, just to be sure. So let's do go to um, record, go to record request first. So we're going to go to our first record and then what we're going to do is duplicate that one. So let's go to records and duplicate. We're going to duplicate this one. Then when we have duplicated this one, we need to change the invoice ID. So we're going to use a set field. And we're going to set field that line item invoice IDFK to our second, our new invoice ID. So dollar sign invoice ID new. Then when we have changed that one, we can omit that record under found sets, I think that should be found. And then we go back to our first one, go to record request page first and omit that one as well. And then we basically automatically arrive at our second line. So then we kind of need to, and the problem is we don't know how often we need to do this. So uh, then I will that's basically, you already have a repetition here. 
and you've got the same thing here so now we're gonna have to figure out how we need to make this uh, thing happen over and over and over again until it needs to stop so we've got a loop function for that and I'm guessing we're probably going to loop somewhere here after that first go to record request page first because we've got that one here as well so we get a loop and we get an end loop and I think the end loop is gonna be somewhere here and I think we need to make sure that we this loop happens we duplicate a record we change the invoice id we omit that one go to the first one and omit that one as well and then we basically continue duplicating and omitting and stuff like that i think this is looking pretty good but we will only know if this really works when we test it out one thing you need to be very careful with when you do a loop you need to have some way to exit that loop because um, if you don't exit this loop, this loop will go on forever and you will be kind of in trouble. So we need to have an exit loop if, and I think a good one would be if all the records are gone. Because if you remember, um, we, um, when we continue, when we did this thing manually, eventually our table was completely empty. So we can use a get function for that, and a good get function for this would be get the amount of records that are found. So get found count equals zero. Exit loop if get found count equals zero. And then we exit our loop. Then we will be in the line items table that will be completely empty. So we, we want what we want to do then is go back to our original layout. Um, looks kind of good to me. I think we need to try this one out. So we need to save this one, control S, and then what we can do is either just go for it and try it, or if you really, really want to see what's going on and you have FileMaker Advanced, you can use the script debugger and the data viewer. Uh, I think I had not yet assigned the script to this button, so let's go to button setup, perform script, specify duplicate invoices, and let's just go for it and see what this one does, right? So now we have invoice number two, and let's just go for it and we've got our script that starts to run here but when we have our script debugger open the script always stops and it allows you to kind of step through it one by one so will I perform this script yes I do I want to step into this script then what happens I've got my set variable invoice old so in my data viewer I can now see what's happening with my data so my invoice ID is um, now 2 and so my invoice old variable also has the value 2. Then we're going to duplicate this record request. And when we step, you can look here. Our invoice ID is just changed to 3. This is here is empty, so we've just duplicated our record. Now this invoice ID is 3. So the set variable invoice ID new will be making a new variable and it will contain the number three so now we've got our old and our new invoice ids that's good freeze window is not really going to do anything here because we can keep on looking at what's going on we go to our other um our other layout we enter find mode we set our field invoice id to our old invoice id we perform our find and then we find three records all for invoice number two that's all looking good and then we start our loop now this is exciting let's see what's going to happen we duplicate our record we're in the first one so that's good because we went there here so we duplicate yes that's looking good we have a set field that changes our field here we omit this one, we go to the first one, we omit that one, and then we exit our loop if our found count is zero, but our found count is two, so we should continue in our loop, yes. We duplicate, we set field, omit, go to the first one, omit, we exit the loop, well, not yet. Duplicate, set field, omit, omit, exit loop if found count is zero, yes that does it and brings us back and let's see what we've done here we've got invoice number three with our three items let's skip back to one so now we've got one that we copied manually and one that we copied by script so looks like this works haha <laughs> really cool